a very good morning to you and many thanks for keeping it right 254 in the morning you're right on on time for entrepreneurship tuesday and it's always amazing to have you on board it's always really amazing and of course today i'm not alone i'm joined by the one and only barry Moses. of course we'll get to interact probably barry mm -hmm. uh -huh. i had a long weekend uh -huh. i hope you guys enjoyed yourselves yesterday really did uh, was politics you. it was quite good we're talking about mm -hmm. the referendum uh -huh. all right the third wheel lands leader a mm -hmm. court. All right. It has become so much a thing that has gained a lot of content, a lot of a lot of discussions all mm -hmm. over the country. Mm -hmm. And right now we are thinking of how probably we can get into it. So we were talking about that. Mziko to Nakunguza. <laughs> Let me not say yes or no. <laughs> Alright. I go with the name of Barry Moses. Oh, it's very good in the social media platform and it's always a pleasure to hang out with you every single Tuesday for Entrepreneurship Tuesday. And today being Entrepreneurship Tuesday, uh, I know these matters on the headlines all over uh, be affecting entrepreneurs around here. So uh, we have lost uh, quite uh, an amount of money from the treasury 63 billion shillings. 63 billion shillings. definitely mm -hmm. white 54 channel on twitter white 54 underscore channel on instagram and white 54 on facebook is the way to interact with us and contribute to this particular story so mr alex yes yes wow it has been so much of an issue mm -hmm. mega arrest uh, mega arrest that is the term of the week <laughs> That's why I can call it. Uh -huh. Because 28 government officials arrested in a day. Mm -hmm. It's quite a mega thing. Uh -huh. Because uh, when we're talking about arrest, it's not just a simple thing that is happening. Mm -hmm. Arresting people, and even actually uh, uh, the cabinet secretary mm -hmm. actually handed himself over mm -hmm. to the DCI mm -hmm. because it received a letter. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's quite not just another issue. It's quite an issue mm -hmm. for even 28 arrests. And even others, you know, they were mm -hmm. like, no, this is a track easy to pss. All right. You know. Wow, 63 billion. Yes, yes, and we're going to mm -hmm. narrow it down probably later on. But for now, I want us to do Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich and his principal secretary, mm -hmm. Kamal Thuge, will spend the night in police custody yesterday. Actually, today they spend the night at the police station. And uh, after they were arrested in connection with a multi billion shilling Ara and Kimora's dams scandal, the two are among the 28 top government of officers who the director of public prosecution ordered for their arrest. Now, all these guys have been were arrested yesterday mm -hmm. and they slapped Kwasel. Uh -huh. Kodisi, yeah. Kodisi, I. I want yeah. us to watch probably this clip before mm -hmm. we even proceed. And of course, once we come back, we'll be bringing you into detail. How did it all begin? Mm -hmm. How was it? And of course, we'll get to narrow it down. Let's first of all have a look at this. by the director of public prosecutions Nordin Haji in connection with the Ara and Kimorel dams scandals. National Environment Management Authority CEO Jeffrey Wahungu, who was also being sought over the multi-billion shilling scam, also presented himself to the DCI headquarters. Haji had approved the charges that subsequently led to the arrest of the team. This decision has been made professionally, independently, devoid of any external influence, political consideration, or any other extraneous matters. Consequently, I have today directed the DCI to effect the arrest, uh, the arrest and immediate arraignment before court of the accused persons. In Eldoret, another group still on the DPP's wanted list was also arrested and taken to Central Police Station in town. KVDA acting CEO Francis Chepkonga Kip Catch, planning manager David Onyango, and deputy procurement officer Charity Mui were among those arrested by CID detectives. Nine other senior KVDA officials listed in DPP Nordin Haji's list of suspects took to their heels to evade arrest. Head of Investigation Bureau John Karyoki said the suspects are expected to be arraigned in court on Tuesday. Director of Public Prosecutions Nordin Haji calling for investigations saying that the conception, procurement and payment process for the Ara and Kimorel Dam projects in Elgeo, Marakwet County were riddled with massive illegalities. Upon investigations by the DCI, it was established that the conception, procurement and payment process for the Aurora and Kimura Dam projects in Elgeo Marakwe County were riddled with massive illegalities. Haji terming the charges as tantamount to economic crimes. And in concluding that it is in the public interest to prosecute these cases, I have considered that such infractions are crimes against Monainchi, 
individually and collectively, and the decision to prosecute is in line with safeguarding the public good. Also in the Hajj's list of wanted persons is the principal secretary at the Ministry of East African Community. Dr. All right, Barry, this has become so much of an issue. Mm -hmm. The issue when we talk about scandals, they are mm -hmm. ever rising. Uh -huh. I don't know what you think about this. All right, these are conversations I hear on a day-to-day -day basis uh, from Matatus. The Matatu I applied it in the morning. Uh, the conversation was the issue of corruption. The conversation was 63 billion. And uh, this is quite a sad story mm -hmm. uh, to see that people are going to politicize it after. Definitely, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm trying to look at it statistically, 63 mm -hmm. billion is not just a little money. Mm -hmm. And last year only, 20, mm -hmm. uh, last year only, 2018, we had NHF scandal, mm -hmm. Kenya pipeline, mm -hmm. we had NHF scandal, mm -hmm. we had more than enough scandals. Mm -hmm. And all these were mounting up to billions of money. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't know, probably where we are heading in terms of these scandals because we're still talking about the wage bill mm -hmm. and how to reduce the wage bill. Mm -hmm. And this scandal now comes in. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about 63 billion shares, mm -hmm. and it's one scandal that's going to cost the taxpayers. All right. And uh, the, they claim to have compensated people. They yes, acquired yes. their land. Yes. Uh, they claim to uh, have paid insurance. They claim to have had to pay some money to secure uh, more money uh, to, to do this. Uh, and my biggest worry, my biggest worry at the end of the day is uh, Kenyans uh, cannot even conceptualize how they can't for how many uh, this how, how big 63 billion is how many zeros are there how many millions <laughs> it takes uh, to make uh, 63 billion yes, and yes. Uh, the reason i say this uh, some people are already saying that uh, 60 billion has been lost. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lost after 60 billion. They forget that this 3 billion <laughs> it really matters a lot. <laughs> it really matters a lot. Yes. It's quite a, mm -hmm. a huge amount of money. So mm -hmm. maybe we can get into the facts of the story. Yes, I think we need to break it down for mm -hmm. you, of course, our viewers. And in May 2018, the National Land Commission was in the process of acquiring land for construction of Aral and Kimorel dams in Kerio Valley in Wasin Gishu County. So, 643 million shillings is said to have been released by the national treasury meant for compensation and resettlement of displaced residents but to date there is no evidence that the land was acquired Arar and Kimorel Dam are now synonymous with a mega scandal that has hit 21 billion shillings unaccounted for. Yes, and uh, the project uh, at a projected cost of 38.5 billion shillings uh, for Arar <coughs> Dam and uh, 28 billion shillings for Kimorel Dam uh, was to see a 60 megawatt uh, of electricity added to the national grid. According to the Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich, uh, Italian farm SIS was paid 7.8 billion shillings in advance representing 15 percent only 15 percent uh, of the contract amount probably before we proceed having a look at it very mm -hmm. you're talking about the project at the projected cost of uh -huh. 38.5 billion shillings mm -hmm. and it was released here we're talking about electricity added it was supposed to add to the national grid mm -hmm. on the contrary the the cabinet secretary, Henry Rotich, it uh, actually says that mm -hmm. they gave it out. Mm -hmm. But it's probably, let's first of all proceed before we can do even the analysis of it mm -hmm. all. In March this year, the National Treasury denied reports that up to 21 billion shillings had been paid out in respect of the construction of Aral and Kimorel Dams before commencement of its works. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how it goes. Rotich is on record. And this is what he says, confirming that the government had spent 12 billion shillings to secure funding for the construction of the two dams, with the sum having been paid out to meet set conditions before the actual funding. The 12 billion shillings entailed an arrangement fee of 545.9 million shillings, mm -hmm. Barry. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the statistics that we are having. Mm -hmm. The 12 billion shillings entailed an arrangement fee of 545.9 million shillings mm -hmm. are three 359.5 million shillings commitment fee, mm -hmm. 3.5 million shillings agency fee, and 11.1 billion shillings insurance premium paid to an Italian contractor. Wow. The figures provided by the Treasury, uh, inclusive of 12 billion shillings uh, loan facilitation fee, add up to 19.8 billion shillings, with Rotich saying 7.8 billion shillings advance payment was in line with Section 147.1 uh, of the Public Procurement uh, Set uh, Disposal Act. Mm -hmm. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Nordin Haji, you know, they even took... <laughs> 
some time out to go and do their own investigations. Mm -hmm. And they took criminal investigators, George Kenotti, mm -hmm. and of course Nodin Haji, mm -hmm. contingent of investigative officers, had gone to Italy mm -hmm. just to try and piece up what was this scandal all about mm -hmm. before they made the arrest. All right. Another issue uh, that is arising that mm -hmm. a lot of resources and money yes. uh, was spent in investigating the scandal. Yes, yes. Who's going to finance uh, this process of investigation? Of course, the government, because mm -hmm. uh, DPP, of course, is on a governmental office. Mm -hmm. KNOT is still on another governmental office. Mm -hmm. So all of these will be funded by the government, mm -hmm. of which now narrows down to the one inches, mm -hmm. because the taxpayers will have to fund for these. Mm -hmm. So we lose money uh, to get stolen money. Uh -huh. you know, of all these things. Wow. And all right. And what stands out for me is this uh, where section where Rotich says uh, the, the payment of 7.8 billion mm -hmm. shillings advance payment was in line with the section 147 cup, uh, cup one. 1 of the public procurement yeah. uh, disposal, said, act. Uh, disposal act is even as the it's constitutional, constitutional. <laughs> it's it's constitutional for this. and uh, it's sad to see all these big digits being played around with you know and i think uh, probably just to make it look a bit appealing even to other young people mm -hmm. i think in kenya you're talking about millions you're joking mm -hmm. And talk about billions now. We are talking about business. Yes, and scandals uh, for millions are not a thing nowadays. Oh, People just brush them off. People forget that millions can do a lot uh, to the economy, and millions can do a lot in terms of service delivery. It takes delivery. a shilling mm -hmm. for it to be called a billion. Mm -hmm. Just one shilling. Just one shilling. If it lacks, can never be a billion. <laughs> so even a shilling really matters a lot. All right. So if it's one shilling less, it's nine hundred and ninety-nine. Definitely. Million. Yes, yes. Uh. Probably just away from this story. Of course, it's, it's it's a story that we are following up for you, and we'll be bringing up to speed probably mm -hmm. later on on these. Very Botswana mm -hmm. president Mosisi mm -hmm. is exploding the country today. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, this uh, bilateral talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is the common time. We hear the common that time the president yes, comes uh, in. So, uh, so many presidents are streaming into yes, Kenya yes. as mm -hmm. we speak, and uh, Kenya is very promising, if you ask me. Uh, yes, despite yes. the 63 billion yes. that we are going to get back, and it seems the DCI and the DPP are really determined to win yeah. this or to get this money back. Mm -hmm. And these people are going to be arranged in court before yes, we today. talk about the Botswana yes. president. Yes, these to be arraigned in court today Definitely. and we hope something is going to come out of this because we have seen people being arraigned in court and nothing always uh, comes out and kenyans have been complaining about this but they arrests this. happen uh, no convictions yes. and uh, the cases never get concluded but what they say in the law uh -huh. you are innocent until proven guilty so every even the accused it's even the innocent. criminals have a right definitely back to the right. Botswana president yes, yes. and uh, we welcome the Botswana president uh, to the country uh, despite uh, the reckless remarks by the star <laughs> the honorable <laughs> Charles Jaguar, Jaguar. Yes, yes we yes. welcome uh, all Africans Presidents and all and foreigners uh, to the country and, of course, and do business mm -hmm. something to note about that the president requested President Masisi mm -hmm. to come along with some business persons from Botswana mm -hmm. because the uh, president says that uh, we believe in bilateral talks mm -hmm. of which we can come to an agreement mm -hmm. and probably we can have some agreements on how mm -hmm. to do business together and I think mm -hmm. that's a good thing for the country. All right. Irrespective of how things are happening, it's mm -hmm. a good deal for entrepreneurs. You mm -hmm. know, we'll get to learn. And this is Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Definitely. All right. And, and uh, so we much. show President Uru going to Tanzania yes. to solve the small issue that we had with Tanzania. Despite beating them at the AFCON, uh, yes. we are still friends. <laughs> <laughs> we are still friends and we are still doing business together. Yes, yes. Uh, but yes, bilateral talks, bilateral mm -hmm. talks, bilateral talks. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the President is determined to do something before yes. his term uh, comes to an end. We don't know about what's going to happen uh, in the referendum or in the referendum talks or if we are going to have him after 2022. Uh, but I like what he's trying to do in terms of uh, unifying Africa yes. and unifying uh, the black people at large. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that Africa mm -hmm. is meant to grow. Uh -huh. I love what Dr. Nkonsan, the chairman of Minds, Mandarin Institute of Development Studies, he says mm -hmm. that Africa will grow. Mm -hmm. Respective of how people want to see it mm -hmm. downfalling, mm -hmm. Africa is growing and it's going someplace. Just and you know, Kenya is is a huge country that is Kenya is a leader. Everyone. We are the G8 of the Definitely. African <laughs> Union. We are, we are members of the G8 of the African Union, Definitely. and we contribute a lot to the African Union. Uh, so Kenya is leading by example, and I yes. like what uh, President Uhuru is doing so much mm -hmm. when it comes to international relations and matters of international relations. Yes. Uh, and I hope uh, leaders are not going to follow after the reckless. The remarks nice. of the Australian MP. We welcome Africans to this country because sure. Kenyans can go to anywhere in Africa and do business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the environment is being set and the environment is quite conducive in Africa yes. right now. And that's, that's mm -hmm. where, well, that's, when it gets to that's where I say, mm -hmm. 
when entrepreneurs are given the good environment to get to mm -hmm. do their business mm -hmm. trust me economic economic because the economy of any particular country will grow mm -hmm. because this the environment that you give to the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. really matters a lot yes of course we'll get to expand on these later mm -hmm. on with mm -hmm. the guests that we have mm -hmm. but for now i think it's good for us to first of all end up the introduction mm -hmm. and probably come on later who mm -hmm. do you have as a guest for the day oh my guest of the day uh we will pick uh who to who to host but we have two people we have a music producer somebody in the music business mm -hmm. and we have somebody in the arts industry as well mm -hmm. so uh, we'll decide uh behind the scenes uh when you when you pretender, mm -hmm. uh, but as at now, I'd like to leave people with a, with a food for thought. All we right. have 40 million people in this country, right? That means your market is 40 million people. Yes. And if we mm -hmm. were to unite Africa, mm -hmm. imagine how big that market would wow, be. If awesome. you were to sell something for one shilling mm -hmm. to each Kenyan, that is 40 million mm -hmm. shillings. If you were to sell it to uh, the rest of Africa, mm -hmm. that is billions. That's Definitely. <laughs> and uh, when I'm talking about that, you know, growing the art in Nairobi mm -hmm. is quite a good deal. Uh -huh. Yesterday I happened to visit somewhere in uh -huh. some place in my local area and uh -huh. they're doing good art. And he was telling me the guy that I met, art is really growing in the country. Uh -huh. uh, even if, despite that people think that most often time it's growing in the slums, uh -huh. even in the other areas, especially in Nairobi, it's really uh -huh. growing and it's finding itself some roots. Uh -huh. So that's what we'll be having a look at right now after uh -huh. we're done with this introduction. Uh -huh. Join me and of course Barry, as we get to take you along of course for Entrepreneurship Tuesday, it's that day we call Making Money. Uh -huh.